Smokies guys, it has been an absolutely crazy earnings season. The earnings season now has officially wrapped up for myself and my wife. We had seven core positions going into this uh, earnings period. So seven core positions, meaning you know seven big positions where substantial amounts of money were in these stocks. So what I wanna do is I wanna go over all seven of those stocks in kind of the numbers those companies reported, the revenue, the EPS and whatnot, and uh, kind of show you guys you know the, the differences in some companies. Some companies reported phenomenal earnings and their stock didn't move. Some reported bad earnings and their stock went up or, or you know broke even or something and it's just like crazy, crazy earnings period. Let me know in that comment section if you guys uh, had any crazy earnings trades. I would love to hear from you guys. So the first position, the first one that kind of kicked off the earnings for us was Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs, one of our core positions. This one blew numbers out of the water. It was unbelievable. Revenue came in at $10 billion versus expectations of $8.7 billion dollars guys a ridiculously massive beat there on revenues earnings per share came in at six dollars and 95 cents versus five dollars and 58 cents unbelievable earnings beats out of Goldman Sachs this was just kick it all off and this was like a really good feeling seeing those earnings and uh, you know that's the type of stock that you know when they report numbers like that uh, numbers that just kill you know you expect that stock to maybe go up 10 15 maybe even 20 percent the next day and what did Goldman Sachs do it went down 2% the next day. Not only did it not go up the next day, it went down 2% after reporting like the most amazing numbers you could possibly, you know, ever report as an investment bank. And uh, that was kind of a worrisome, you know, little uh, moment in my time because I'm like, there's a first company that's reporting here. They report these killer numbers and the stock can't go up. What's going to happen if one of my companies reports bad numbers or just okay numbers? What's going to happen to the stock at that point, guys? Crazy, crazy. So the next one up was Apple. My, my I don't have any Apple shares in my specific portfolio, but my wife's portfolio is loaded up on Apple shares by far biggest position by far and away. So Apple did earnings per share $2.73 versus $2.67 was expected. So a nice little beat there. Revenue came in at $61.1 billion versus $60.8 billion. A little slight beat there on revenue. iPhone units missed slightly. 50 er, $52.2 million came in at versus $52.5 was expected. Fiscal Q3 guidance came in at $51.5 billion to $53.5 billion. Uh, $51.6 billion was expected. So they did very well there. There was a you know a better guidance expected than what uh, Wall Street was expected. Net income came in at almost 14 billion dollars, up from a little over 11 billion dollars the previous year, guys. A massive jump in net income there. And Apple stock did end up moving up and continue to move up after those earnings were reported. Basically, everybody got way too downbeat on Apple, uh, thinking it was like the end of the world or something. Really, they, like like Apple, you know, they ended up beating all the numbers, and then their guidance is pretty strong. And so uh, the whole end of the world theory for Apple is just proved wrong once again. That always happens, like every year or two, you know, these theories come out that Apple sales could go down or something like that, and they're always, always proved wrong, guys, and it's happened once again. So that was a good one. Now, Cirrus Logic, okay? Cirrus Logic's the only stock I hold and have been holding, you know, going into this earnings period, where I felt like their earnings were straight garbage, okay? Q4 revenue came in at 303 million. That was versus 318 was expected, so a big miss there. Q4 gap earnings came in at 19 cents. Wall Street was expecting way more than that. It saw a Q1 revenue to be expected to be between 210 million and 250 million. That would be down quite a bit year over year, guys. The Cirrus Logic just reported garbage numbers, okay? Just straight garbage. Like, it was horrible numbers. Like, misses across the board. And I thought, you know, Cirrus Logic is going to be down massively the next day. And what ends up happening to Cirrus Logic? It goes up the next day, okay? After hours, it was down massively. Like, I think it was down 10% after hours or 12% or something like that. Next day it ends up going up. And uh, so it bottoms out after hours that day, I think at $33 and some change. And now here we are today about a, you know less than a month later and it, it's I think 38 or $39. So amazing that it ended up bouncing back like that. But uh, Cirrus Logic, you know, obviously with all my stocks, I'm in them for several years out. Like I, I buy these stocks and I'm planning holding them for years. Cirrus Logic, the long-term plan is still you know intact and everything's going good there. It's just a short term. The numbers were just awful guys, awful. 
but the stock goes up. I think that was just karma kind of coming back around because, you know, Goldman Sachs, that stock should have been up huge the next day and it goes down. So the Cirrus Logic reports bad numbers, the stock goes up. Who knows, guys? That's crazy Wall Street for you. eBay was the next big position that reported. So eBay, they reported numbers, uh, basically revenue numbers of 2.58 billion. They barely missed what the Wall Street was expecting. They were expecting around 2.59 billion. Uh, revenue did rise 12% year over year, okay? That's a very nice rise there for eBay. It reported diluted earnings per share, 53 cents per share, matching consensus estimates. eBay said it expects second quarter revenue to range between 2.64 billion and 2.68 billion. The midpoint of 2.66 was slightly below what Wall Street was expecting, around 2.68 billion, guys. Um, eBay, solid numbers there, okay, solid numbers. Um, I think the stock ended up going down the next day. And uh, that was kind of disappointing because it's like, the, you know, they, they got good growth with that company, fairly low PE and whatnot, but you know, it is what it is. Shares of Callaway, uh, this one just reported unbelievable numbers and the stock was actually rewarded for them. Callaway, the maker of golf clubs and other golf related products reported first quarter profit and sales well above Wall Street expectations. Callaway said it earned $63 million or 65 cents a share in the quarter compared to 26 million or 27 cents a share in a year ago period. Period. Sales rose 31% to 403 million compared to 309 million a year ago. Analysts polled by Fact Check had expected 51 cents a share on sales of three, uh, 372. So basically, big beats there. The company also raised its 2018 guidance, saying it expects 2018 net sales of 1.17 billion to 1.19 billion compared with a previous guidance of 1.12 to 1.14. Its EPS expectations increased to between 77 cents and 82 cents for the year compared with the previous EPS expectations of 64 cents to 70 cents there, guys. Um, phenomenal numbers out of Callaway. I'm killing on that position. I think we're up somewhere around 25% in total on my different accounts on Callaway. So um, things are just going phenomenal there. Companies reporting great numbers. Um, just uh, a B stock right now. Let's just put it that way. On the flip side, the bad one was Toll Brothers, okay? Toll Brothers, it wasn't a big miss by them, but my goodness gracious, did that start stock get hammered the next day, okay? Toll Brothers profit misses estimates due to higher costs. Net income fell to 111 million or 72 cents per share in the quarter ended April 30th from 124 million or 73 cents a year earlier, while the company recorded an inventory charge of 13.8 million, which hurt earnings, obviously. Revenue rose to 1.59 billion from 1.36 billion a year ago. Analysts had expected 76 cents of profit and uh, about 1.58 billion, so they barely beat on revenue. They missed by about four cents there on EPS. And as that company is probably going to do somewhere around, you know, $4, maybe even $4.50, somewhere around there of EPS this year, right? You know, at least expect to do that. And uh, they slightly, beat, you know, missed by four cents. That's like such a small miss, guys. But the stock got hammered. It was down like nine or 10% the next day. Uh, it has bounced back the last few days, but uh, we'll, we'll see where that one goes over time. I'm obviously in that one for a long term period. L Brands. So L Brands was super interesting here, okay? L Brands looked like it was all bad, okay? It looked like it was all bad. So L Brands stock plunged more than 6% after the bell. This was yesterday. The parent company of brands like Victoria's Secret and Bath & Body Works reported first quarter fiscal results that beat analysts' expectations on top and bottom lines, but weakened second quarter guidance. Uh, L Brands issued guidance for the second quarter of earnings per share between 30 cents and 35 cents. Wall Street was expecting 41 cents, and uh, after hours, you know, the stock was down 6 cents seven percent and then I wake up today and L Brands was actually not only not was was it not down, but it was actually up. Okay, L Brands was up uh, two to three percent. I've seen it up as much as four percent today at one point, and uh, so unbelievable there. Uh, you could say with uh, Cirrus Logic and L Brands, I, I guess I kind of got lucky because those ones, um, you know, obviously you, you know missed numbers, and then their stock still went up the next day. So I'm kind of thankful there. But Goldman Sachs, at the, at the flip side, was you know one that reported these unreal numbers, and the stock went down to percent the next day. It just depends on, on situations. One of the great things about value investing and investing in lower PE companies is there's only so much room for the downside, right? When I start buying in these stocks like L Brands, I've added shares like crazy over the past month or two, right? It's such a low PE company that in order to really get that stock to move down again in a big way, their numbers would have to be like disastrous mode, okay? Same thing with Cirrus Logic. Like Cirrus Logic has a lot of things going for it for the long term, but right now it's got all the short term stuff going on. 
but at the same time, Cirrus Electric's at a forward PE of somewhere around 10-ish, okay? So when you, when you buy these stocks that have really low forward PEs, but they still have you know, good potential future long-term growth, it's hard to push them down even further. So that's why I like jumping in some of these ones. Um, are they a little bit dangerous in the short term in, the, in that they could go down more? Yes, but they're, 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 I guess you could say floor is much limited from let's say a high PE company that trades at a really high valuation and all of a sudden the growth slows or something. Sometimes those stocks can get just absolutely destroyed in a very short amount of time so but anyways that that was what happened over the earnings period let me know how things went for you guys i would love to hear from you as always anyways thank you for watching guys and have a great day